Okay, so we started by taking a look at a little bit of the history of voting rights and especially of the changes from the voter, uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. These were all things that expanded the right to vote. What we're going to shift over and talk about now is we're going to talk about policies that um, may not necessarily seem like they are put in place to restrict the right to vote, but these are policies that have a negative impact on voter turnout. So we're going to look at policies that states pass. States still have a lot of freedom to pass laws about who gets to vote. So we'll look at the laws that states pass that um, oftentimes have the effect of decreasing voter turnout. When we say decreasing voter turnout, we mean if one person who wants to vote is unable to vote, that's a decrease of voter turnout. So let's take a look first at the idea of voter registration. In most states, people are required to register before they are allowed to vote. So they have to register with the state saying that they want to vote. They have to tell the state like where they live so they'll be assigned a polling place and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is just an extra step that people have to take in order to be able to vote. So we're going to say that this creates an obstacle. That's what we want to talk about. We want to find out if these policies create a barrier or if they remove a barrier. In this case, this creates a barrier because it's one extra thing that you have to do before you're able to vote. Um, people may not know that they need to register until it's too late. States have different deadlines about when you can register and when you have to be registered by. People may not know how to register to vote. Um, this has the effect of decreasing voter turnout. We say that because there are people out there that want to vote, and by the time Election Day gets here, they have not registered to vote. Or they may not have updated their registration, but registration is a voter registration is something that prevents some people from being able to cast a vote, so that decreases voter turnout. This creates an additional obstacle for the voter to complete before they're able to exercise their right to vote. Um, registration is different from state to state, so it's harder in some states than it is in others. There may be um, a more limited time period in which you can register. Some states allow online registration and others don't. So there's differences from state to state, and it's up to the voter to make sure that they've taken care of all this ahead of time. One voter registration policy that helped is what we call the National Voter Registration Act of 1993, but really people call this the Motor Voter Act. This was passed in the early 1990s to try to make voter registration easier in all the states. So this is a national law that tells the states that they have to allow you to register to vote or update your voter registration when you apply for your driver's license or you're renewing your driver's license. A driver's license is something that a lot of people across all the different states are very likely to obtain because they want to make sure they're able to drive. Voting is not something that you think about every day, but driving is. And so more people are likely to get their driver's license than register to vote. And so we want to make that as easy as possible. So here you're doing all your driver's license stuff. The state is getting all your information anyway. So they might as well allow you to register to vote very easily. So in this case, the Motor Voter Act removes a barrier to voting. This removes an obstacle or one more thing a voter has to do. So we would say that this increases voter turnout because it makes it easier to complete all the steps necessary before you can vote. It is so sad how new this stuff is, but finally, uh, in, in the year 2020, we have a lot of states that allow you to register to vote online. Uh, this is really embarrassingly recent, but very few states allowed you to vote on or to register to vote online for a long time. Now that has expanded. So we are currently at 38 states that allow people to register to vote online. Tennessee just started this in 2017. And uh, so these states on the map in orange allow you to register to vote online. Oklahoma is working on it and North Dakota doesn't require you to register to vote. So it's not important. But these states in the gray do not allow online voter registration. That means you have to mail in, you have to get forms and mail them in or you have to go register to vote in person. This would be a policy that increases voter turnout because like we said, it removes an obstacle. If it removes a barrier to voting, this helps you uh, helps you vote, makes voting easy. Uh, this is really important because um, another thing, like you don't just register to vote once, but you have to register to vote like every time you move the rest of your life, you gotta update 
update your address and all this stuff. You probably move into different states and things like that. So this uh, allows you to easily update your voter registration and also all these states allow you to check your voter registration status. Lots of stuff happens in a, you know, in a time between elections so you can like look yourself up and make sure you're at the right address and your voter registration is up to date. Some states are adopting what we call same day voter registration. That means that you can go to the polling place on election day and you can register to vote there. They still want you registered because they want to make sure that they've got you at the right precinct and all that kind of stuff, but you can register on election day. That means that you can, you know, you can decide on election day, hey, I want to vote. And even if you're not registered, you can take care of that while you are voting. Uh, if you look at the map, those are the states in blue. Most of the states uh, require you to register somewhere between like two and four weeks ahead of the election. Tennessee is one of those states you have to register 30 days before the election. Um, so this is really important. And also it makes it easier, like it allows you to update your registration on election day. So if you move or something like that, you can go to the polling place close to your house should tell them your new address and all that kind of stuff and update your registration right there. So this would be another one of those policies that increases turnout because it eliminates a barrier to voting. And these states here that you see in blue, these are states that are working on or have already passed what we call automatic voter registration. These states are going to make sure that all of their citizens are automatically registered to vote. And if you don't want to be registered to vote, you can do a, you know, you can do the paperwork to opt out. So this requires a step for people who don't want to be registered to vote, but requires nothing of everyone who wants to be registered to vote, which is, that's the majority of the people. We want people to be able to exercise their right to vote whenever they decide. So this is another one of those policies that increases voter turnout because it removes a barrier to voting. Here, the states are collecting your information in various ways anyway. So, you know, you're doing your taxes, you're getting driver's licenses, all sorts of stuff that you do with the state. So here they just automatically register every uh, person who's eligible to vote. So every 18 year old, uh, and above, those people are automatically registered to vote. So registration in general is an obstacle. It's just a step that you have to complete before you get to vote. So um, this is one of those, you know, this is a policy that negatively impacts voter turnout because it's just an extra thing that you have to know and you have to take care of in order to be able to vote. A lot of these policies like online registration, same day registration, things like that, they make the registration process easier. So those will increase turnout. But in general, voting, vo uh, the requirement that people register to vote is something that decreases voter turnout. Another policy that seems like no big deal and seems like a very simple step is what we call a photo ID law. These are laws that require voters to have ID in order to vote. And that seems pretty harmless. Like we want voters to like prove who they are and all this kind of stuff. But this is another policy that decreases voter turnout. It makes it a little more difficult for people to vote. Under the Constitution, states still have freedom to make some voter requirements. So states have the right to pass laws that require voters to show a valid ID with a photo in order to vote if they choose to do so. Um, this is intended to limit voter fraud. Uh, the thing is, we don't ever really have significant evidence of voter fraud. We'll have uh, one or two cases here and there, but not voter fraud at all on the type of level that could impact the outcome of an election in any way. So this is a policy where states are passing laws to prevent a problem that we don't have any evidence of occurring. So this is a policy that creates an extra barrier for a potential voter. This decreases voter turnout. You may think of everyone as having an ID, but if a person does not have an ID, they can't vote. If they don't have a photo ID in these states, they can't vote. If their driver's license or their ID expires, they can't use it to vote. Even though it's still a picture of themselves, uh, it is no longer a valid ID that they can show to vote. If you are a person who lost your wallet or maybe your uh, wallet was stolen on election day, all of a sudden you may not be able to exercise your right to vote. 
On the map here, you can see the states that have photo ID laws. Um, the states that are in kind of the dark blue have what we call a strict photo ID law. That means that you're only able to uh, vote if you produce a state-issued photo ID. So it has to be like a driver's license or a state-issued photo ID. They don't accept things like student IDs um, or work IDs or anything like that. You have to have a state-issued photo ID. Um, the places where you see non-strict photo ID, those states have different requirements. It's different in every state, but like, for example, in Florida, you can vote with a Costco card or a gun license. Um, those kinds of things are also photo IDs, um, but they're not necessarily, the, the Costco card certainly not one that's issued by the state. Um, so they're a little different state to state, but these are states that require you to show something with your photo on it, usually a state photo ID. Um, they show that, that you have to show that in order to prove that you are the person that they have registered to vote. Photo ID laws are more likely to have negative impact on young voters and on lower income voters. Those are the people that are less likely to have a photo ID. We have like, you have to think about like, especially young people outside of Memphis. Like if you live in like a big city with public transportation, uh, like, you know, like a New York, a Washington, a San Francisco, like you may not need, you may not have a need to get a driver's license for a long time. You may just use public transportation all the time. So we have a lot of groups like that. We have low income people think about like, you know, especially very low incomes, people living in poverty, maybe homeless. They don't have photo IDs often. They don't have the documents necessary to get those things, but they are still citizens and still have the right to vote if they choose. I have to think about very old people. My girl Mima, she's 97. She doesn't drive anymore, so her driver's license has expired. We don't really have a need to go get Mima a new driver's license. So like technically she couldn't vote if she uh, if she wanted to vote in the next election here. Um, so there you see a little chart from, this is the Brennan Center in New York. And so um, this is showing the percent of the population without a state issued photo ID. In those states that require a strict photo ID law, these people would not be able to vote. We see that negatively impacts African Americans, low income Americans, very young Americans, and very old Americans the most. This creates an additional obstacle for people to complete in order to be able to vote. Um, and, and one NYU study, they have found that as much as 11% of the voting population does not have a proper photo ID in order to be able to vote. So photo ID law seems pretty harmless, but it does impact a lot more people than you would probably think of. So there is a little bit of a pattern in voting when we see states that have photo ID laws. It's hard to say that one causes the other or whatever, but states that tend to vote Republican uh, tend to be the states that impose photo ID laws more so than states that tend to historically vote Democratic. Uh, we also see in the charts down here that the gaps, the, the gaps between voting turnout among uh, different racial minority groups are larger in states where they have strict photo ID laws. So we see that photo ID laws do correlate with bigger gaps between white voters and non-white voters. And we also see that photo ID laws um, tend to mostly be implemented in states where uh, Republicans make up the majority of at least the votes cast. So we do see that photo ID laws could potentially be having impacts on the outcomes of elections. So photo ID laws are something that, you know, on the surface don't seem like they would have a negative impact, but it creates another obstacle for voters, right? And for even, you know, like we said, even voters who happen to lose their ID uh, the day before the election or something like that. The thing is, especially a lot of you guys worked at polling places during the election, they already have a record of who's there. When I go in to vote and I tell them I'm Kurt Rakestraw, they look me up in the book and they see that I am registered at this particular precinct. They have all my information there. They could ask me a series of questions and I could obviously prove that I am Kurt Rakestraw without a photo ID in order to cast my vote. Um, it would be like we've talked about with voter fraud. It would require a lot of effort for people to commit voter fraud in order to get like one extra vote 
or two extra votes. Um, this is not the kind of thing where people are going to be able to impact the outcome of elections because we're not requiring them to show photo IDs in order to vote. So this is a policy that a lot of states have passed, um, and they like to base these policies on the idea that there is uh, a lot of potential voter fraud that they're stopping. But this is just not the kind of policy or not the kind of the, the not the kind of problem that we've seen a lot of evidence for in the past. All right, so that's just a couple policies real quick. The, regist the idea of voter registration and the impact of photo ID laws. We're now going to run through um, a bunch of other types of laws that have impacts on voters, but uh, a lot of we'll run through these very quickly. A lot of quick policies and see how they impact voters from state to state.